In this video, I'll be showing you how I create perfect pin curls with the Roll and Go hair tool. I use the smaller side of the tool to create medium sized pin curls, measuring about 2 centimeters wide, about the size of your thumb. You do not need much to create a good pin curl wet set, just a setting product, water, something to secure the curls, and a comb. For my pin curl wet set process, I like to begin on freshly washed hair. And my hair has kind of dried a little bit, but it's still quite wet. I do have a spray bottle of water for any pieces that do seem a little bit too dry. And the setting product that I use is the Lotta Body Setting Lotion. I have mine diluted here with some water in a spray bottle. For wet hair that is clean, I like to do a one to three dilution ratio. So for every one part lot of body, I have three parts water. You can experiment with different setting lotions and different ratios to see what works best for you. The first thing I like to do when I get out of the shower is create my hair parting. That way it's nice and crisp and it can form with that hair memory. Typically I use an ear to ear part. And what that means is you're gonna have your hair parting go from one ear all the way to the neck. So as if you were to pull all this hair back, the hair parting connects completely. And that's a great standard way to think about your hair sections. You're gonna have this front section, the bang section, this front section, and the back. You can go about your hair sections and your pin curls so many different ways, but if you're just getting started, I think it's easy to keep it simple. Depending on what size your pin curls are gonna be, that's how large your section should be. So if I'm going to use this tool to create the pin curls, I want my sections to, about, to be about the size of this circle. And we're gonna do two sections for the bang. So I'm gonna start that ear to ear part all the way back here. I'm just gonna use these large duckbill clips. And to keep this pin curling tutorial very beginner friendly, I'm not gonna worry with the direction, what type of pin curl it is. We're just gonna do one direction and we're going to do one standard lie flat pin curl. At the hairline, Create a square with your comb. And you want your square to be about the size of the circle of the tool. It's about, an, you want it to be about an inch. So this piece of hair has almost completely dried. So I'm gonna wet it with some water before I apply the setting lotion. I'm going to take the tool, wrap it around, and roll back. Now the great thing about these tools is you can literally stick your thumb in and grab the hair and keep winding. You can lay it on top of itself like this, so it's very on base. Grab your duckbill clip and pin it in place right through the center. You're digging that bottom duckbill clip underneath all the hair sections or all the hair and clasping it on top. Something you might have to do a couple times before you get it just right. If you do not have duckbill clips, you can of course use bobby pins. I recommend using two in a crisscross motion. So typically when I do my rollers, I kind of work back to front, and with pin curls, you can definitely do that. You may find it easier to work back to front, but for the purposes of this video, I didn't want to have the pieces of hair in my face, so I did the front section first. And you want to make sure that none of your ends are pointing outwards. These little pieces, they want to come out really bad. It's 
harder when you have your hair different lengths too. And if you're having that problem, just like with rollers, you can always change your section, make it smaller, and try again. But I try to tuck that end piece in right at the beginning of rolling, that way I know that it's in there. Sometimes I have to shove it in there with my thumb. too and that's exhausting. <laughs> so now you can add a second row behind the first row if you like. Have our first little quad pin curls and what we're gonna do is continue these rows all the way down and let's see if we can do two rows of two we can do four on top four on the side or four on this side and then we'll see how many we need for the back so we can divide this into What's really helpful with creating your sections too is having a rat tail comb. It'll help you adjust the size and the shape of your sections. You don't want them to be too big because then your curl won't hold. And you don't want them to be too small because then you'll get like a really wiry, crunchy curl. Again, watch out for these little straight ends. See how my section is a little long? It really shouldn't be that long. If you're having trouble with those ends, it might be time to reform that hair section and make it a more defined square. For these front side sections, I did roll them a little larger because it seems that I have less hair. And I think that's okay as long as the curl isn't going to be weighed down. I always try to comb out each section very smooth before I apply the hair to the roller. That way it is flat like a ribbon and the curl will be as smooth as well. So I repeated the same process on the other side, creating four pin curls or two rows of two. That way everything should be pretty symmetrical once it's brushed out. Now that the front is complete, we can move on to the back. For the back, we essentially just want to repeat everything we just did, creating those 
rows, and then even sections about the size of the curler. I am positioning a handheld mirror in front of my vanity so that I can see the back of my head and sectioning off that lower row of the hair. You can use your fingers to grab your first hair section and pull it towards the front so you can see it and apply your setting lotion and begin the pin curl process. I like to work side to side and start with the curls that I can see. I'm keeping these pin curls on the thinner side since the sections are quite long. And for the purpose of keeping everything simple, the setting of the back will just be halfway down the head with the curlers facing towards the face. So these first initial pin curls are rolled towards that left ear. Now we can repeat this process on the other side, curling the hair under, rolling towards the ear. Alternatively, you could just roll all the pin curls in the back in the same direction. The main point is that the curl is going to fold under at the ends. But if you've never used the tool before, you might find it easier to divide your hair down the middle and roll towards you in a way that you can see. So I continued some rows onto the back and I ended up needing one, two, three, four rows of pink curls. And if you see at this point anything that is coming out, you're gonna have to redo that curl. But trust me, even though it's a pain, it is totally worth the hassle of redoing that section. This process took me about an hour. It definitely takes me longer to do pin curls than rollers, but it is one of those things where you're going to set your hair and it's going to stay curled usually for multiple days. It is kind of a tedious, labor-intensive process especially at the beginning if you're just starting to learn especially doing the back of your head it can seem so exhausting so pace yourself be patient and just know that it will get better and it will get easier over time and there is so much trial and error that goes into these hairstyles which is what I've been learning over the last year. So it's nice to share my experiences here, so hopefully that can take some of the troubleshooting out of the process for you. I'm gonna take one more spritz of setting lotion, just to make sure everything is saturated. So there you have it, the completed pin curl set using the roll and go hair tool. So I'm coming back for the brush out and we will see how it turns out. You can find the roll and go hair tool and many other styling products on vintagehairstyling.com. To see how I sleep comfortably in pin curls, I have this video for you here. Stay tuned for the brush out and styling tutorial.